welcome back. It's been a while, I know, but we are going to get started. Today we're gonna to start on making the frame lock folder with the Damascus from Alex Steel. We're gonna start on this project today. But before we can do that, I need to clean this garage up. And let me kind of explain and then show you what I'm talking about. So over the weekend I was putting together some bicycles, some kind of gravel cruising, gravel grinder bikes for my sons. <laughs> these frames that I bought used they're just old you know they're good quality steel frames but most of them didn't have any components hanging on them so I had to dig really really deep into my parts bins let me just show you this mess look at this I, I mean we've got some brake end cable ends uh, brake parts bottom brackets bar ends why is this tool over there why is that tool there some discount V brake here's some old stuff I've stored off an old road bike I, I mean like this place is just littered with parts this here's my my bicycle toolbox it's supposed to be just tools but as you can tell it kind of morphs into bicycle part storage I mean it's ridiculous come over here you know pulling the grips off of this why not just leave that in the vice just leave it there for a few days like look at this look at this mess this is my parts bin. This is where everything's supposed to go. Look up over here. You know, I had parts stacked on my laptop. Parts, parts, parts. Oh, we got brake cables on the printer. Uh, one thing I did do, uh, I got this pegboard. This is Ikea pegboard. Like it way more than traditional pegboard. This stuff sucks compared to this stuff. Really like this stuff. And so my idea here is I'm going to set up a little uh, a bike pantry sort of or a little storage place, a little bike shop, if you will, so I can keep all my parts and cables off my printer and up on hooks. So that's what I need to do right now. I really need to get this place cleaned up and then we can get started on the design for the frame lock. And I've got something different I'm gonna do for that, but I'll tell you about that in just a moment. Before we do anything else, let's get this place cleaned up. All right, it is looking so much better in here. Check this out. Nice clean workbench, clean workbench, clean workbench. I'm stoked. Got some of the parts organized. Got my other bin on the other side of the van underneath the stairs. My bike tools up there. We are ready to work. Now, I had done some design work, some concept sketches for this blade. Uh, jump knife, I've got one of these. I've got one of these in the making right now. This is a, uh, it's just been heat treated and it has a, uh, a convex grind. A little thinner, I did this one out of one eighth. It's pretty good grinds on here. I'm excited to finish this up. But that's not what we're talking about right now, is it? I'm gonna do another one of those soon too. Okay, here's what we're talking about. So this is the basic knife that I wanna make with this. Now, when I kinda lay this on here, I'm gonna actually have to go a little bit smaller than this, like I decided maybe 2.5 inches thick for the blade, which is one inch, unless I decide to draw this material out, but I'm really nervous about doing that because I don't want to wreck it. I mean, this is, I'm gonna leave it because essentially this is how Alec had made this piece of steel and I don't want to change his work and his involvement with the project, so we're gonna leave it like this. But before I'm able to use this, I do need to get this material brought down and I'm not sure how to do it still. Uh, what I'm thinking is I might look for a, a machine shop in Calgary that has a surface grinder and I don't wanna, I don't wanna take it to a forge, I don't wanna hammer it. Like I said, this is how Alec had, had made it and I want it to stay that way. I wanna be true to his part, his involvement of this project. That's one thing that we're gonna have to figure out as we go down this road is where on earth I'm going to get this flattened. If worse comes to worse, I could maybe try doing it in my milling machine, maybe, uh, you know, flattening it down and then taking it to the grinder and, but that's gonna be really, really hard to get it nice and, and parallel and really even very consistent and nice and flat. So that's one area I still need to work out, still need to figure that, that part of this project, but we'll crush that bridge when we come to it. I did have a gentleman email me and he offered to do AutoCAD drawings and 3D renderings of this knife and basically do complete drawings for me so I could build to those and I do sincerely appreciate the offer. Thank you very much. But I think for me what I'm going to do with this project is I'm going to draw this thing out by hand. I'm not going to use a computer for any of this and basically I'm going to work off of these drawings here. I'm going to have to scale them down a little bit and my thoughts are that uh, with my French curves, rulers, pencils, erasers, and a photocopier, I should be able to make some accurate drawings. I'll lay everything out like using old school measuring techniques and rulers and stuff, compasses. I'm actually going to do all the design work completely by hand manually on paper. 
again, once I get the design that I want, I can make different templates, I can work on the blade, and I can make photocopy after photocopy, and then use some fairly thick paper stock, and I'm going to make templates and use like thumbtacks and stuff to make sure we can get the articulation correctly. I think that's going to be a fairly easy way to design it. At least that's kind of the way my brain works. I can understand that. For me, I just think this is probably the easiest way to do it. And again, I don't really want to farm this work out as little of it out as I can because I want this to be a knife that I've made with the steel that Alec has made. So that's the plan. That's what we're going to get to it. Now, let me show you something else. I have ordered uh, screws. So these are the little tiny screws that will hold everything together. I can cut those down if I need to. So 3 16 pivots. And the most important part of this whole project, well, let me show you these. Got some little teeny tiny bearings. Ah, you know what? This, this is going to be a, a, a challenging, this is going to be a project that I'm not used to. I mean, I can hardly open these packages with my big clunky fingers. Uh, there's another bearing race in there. Come on. Come on. Got some really nice ball bearings. And these will be for our, uh, instead of nylon washers, I'm gonna use bearings. I think this will be awesome. But before we get to any of that stuff, before we need any of that stuff, we need to get our knife designed. So I'm just going to set up here with some paper and a pen and pencil, rulers, all that stuff, and we'll get the designing of this blade. little snafu uh, I think I'm gonna have to get a different compass because when I crank the sucker in as tight as possibly goes it's not tight enough for what I need I need to be able to draw circles like really small and this is more of a I think this is actually like a metal working one you can put a scribe in it or something it does a nice job at really large radiuses but um, for what I need to do and the little tiny circles I need to be accurately laying out. And, and the key thing for me when I'm doing this is that I need to base all my design off the pivot point. So that is like the money because from there, we'll see if our blade is gonna work. We'll know how much, you know, our spacer is gonna have to be, if the handle's long enough for the blade to swing into it. And I mean, we can kind of check all that stuff quickly and swing it around. That's where a blade will go. So the handle's long enough. You know what? It's always nice having another blade you can kind of look at. I might have to take a few of my folders apart to see how exactly they get these to work. That might be what I end up having to do, but I would, I would like a smaller compass so I can make some smaller lines. And then actually, I don't know if in my garage is the best place. It's too dirty. You see how, you see how dirty that paper's getting? 
I want to make a nice master copy that I can work of. So once I kind of get the design done, then I can take the blade and, and make a template for that. Take the handle, make a template for that. You know, use some thumbtacks, pivot everything around, see how it's going to work. And then obviously I'm going to have to translate all these measurements to the equipment when I'm making it, to, to my milling machine and, and stuff like that, which is another problem. I don't have a really good rotary table. But you know what, we're just gonna kinda go for it. This might be a little bit crude, but I think if we kinda take every single step and focus on these steps one at a time, we should be able to get a really good, really good knife. And then obviously on the other side, actually it would end up being on this side, I'm going to have to have a lock bar cut in. There'll probably be something like this, like this. But again, I really need to have this shape done and my pivots and then basically where my stop pin groove is going to be I need all that accurately referenced you know that way I can see how much I need because I don't want any of of this of the hand of the blade sticking out past here once it's all been put together right so I need to make sure that this piece of metal that's back in this end when this flips around I need to make sure it's going to clear here you know maybe we need to make this a little longer or move like move that pivot back but I need to be able to draw this out a little better and uh, this isn't cutting it. So I'm gonna whip inside, see if I have a smaller one of these suckers and if not, I'm gonna have to whip to town. I hope we have one inside. All right, just checked in the house. We do not have one. It's one other place we might have one and that's in my toolbox in the shipping container. thought it was right here. Ooh, that's a nice pencil. Nope, 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 nope. Negatory, cacciatory. Well, we do not have a compass out here, so I was afraid they would come to this, but I'm going to have to whip into town quickly and grab one. Over the weekend, we probably got like another two or three inches, but it is so bright here. Like, everything's white. You got a nice sun up in the sky, but instead of green grass or dirt or whatever, you've got white, a white reflector all over the earth. It makes it super bright out here. But don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. I am absolutely loving the sunshine and the warmness. I'm really hoping, really hoping the next couple weeks we're going to get rid of our snow. That would be awesome. That is just part of my little security system, you could call it. There's been a lot of thieves in our area lately. And so I thought, you know what, if I put a sign up, it says no trespassing, video surveillance. I do have some video surveillance going. No trespassing, don't come on my property if you don't belong here. But it is a bit of an inconvenience to uh, have to open and close it every time I leave, but it's a wicked world we live in. Hi, could I just get a, uh, let's get a large black coffee. Thank you.
right, so something else that came in the mail from True Grit. You know, it's funny, I was waiting on these and these were like left in the wrong mailbox and I was really worried I might not see them if somebody took them, but uh, I contacted my post ops on Friday. Voila, let's check out what we got. this do a better job oh yes look at that really nice and tight oh sweet perfect that's exactly what I needed you can get much much tighter radiuses with this little guy so what that means now back to the design work Well, I kind of hate to do this, but I'm half tempted of taking a picture of this, moving it to my computer and seeing if I can't do some of this with uh, SketchUp. So I'm already seeing a couple little design flaws here and I'm not sure if I need to address these right now or if I can just kind of modify on the fly to get this centered correctly. So uh, the first one I'm noticing, I like this, I think that would be a beautiful fold up right there having the, the tip of the blade come right like that. So it'll kind of like look like this when it's closed. Um, but the one design flaw I'm seeing like that is that we've got, let me zoom out. So we've got a little bit of that blade sticking out past our handle there. So I'm not entirely sure if I can just chop that down. At the same time, this is looking a little bit thin to me. I mean, I think that would be a really sleek little knife right there. And then just give it the old one to snaparoo. Lock open like that. Really, really digging that. This will act as a bit of a, a little bit of a guard. But that would essentially be the blade. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. Still got plenty of room for a spacer in here, which is good. Really, we've got like all this room, so we could put a nice beefy spacer in there. Um. Let me see something. Even if I just take the blade and hold it up against our stock, I mean, I, I can't go too close to the edges because there's a little bit, you know, we've got to clean that up, but I can definitely go bigger than that. That's not using near enough stock. So probably go about another eighth of an inch wider on the blade. Again, the handle will get bigger as well. I think for today, I'm gonna have to call it right there. I'm not entirely sure I might get back into doing it tonight. Probably spend some time in front of the computer doing the design work tonight. But uh, I'm liking the way this is heading. It's a pretty nice pattern right there. 
All right, guys, well, that's about all I can give to this project for today. Uh, I've got to get back on that jump knife as well as I've got a couple other knives for customers on the go right now, so I need to get working on those. And then hopefully tomorrow we can get back and do a little more filming and a little more work on this project. And like I mentioned, I'm probably gonna do some computer work tonight and see what I can do with the drawing. Uh, maybe we can solidify that tonight and then we can tomorrow start uh, putting our templates onto some steel and start whacking it up and seeing, you know, start making some progress towards this project. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you, Alex Steel, for this awesome steel. I'm so stoked. Uh, I'm really excited to be getting back at this project. So, till next time, cheers.